Hello viewers and welcome back to NATO Plays Minecraft. So we're at the house at the moment and we're going to be heading over to the building site over there in a minute. But I wanted to point out a couple of things. Firstly, there has been a snapshot which has added a few things, none of which are massively important to me. But it has introduced a strange bug as you might be able to notice. My health and armour and food bar is a weird colour and I don't quite know why. I know if I drop a certain number of items, it disappears and goes back to normal. And then I'll pick up one and it'll go strange again. And I pick up another. And if they're in certain slots, it's okay. If they're in others, it seems to care about it. And yeah. So that's really strange. It's a known bug, it's on the bug tracker. So they know about it. So I'm not going to bother reporting it, but uh, is it getting dark? It's getting dark. Why are you getting dark already? I've just started recording. Ugh. So yeah, that's an interesting little bug. Uh, hopefully in a snapshot that'll be fixed, because it's kind of irritating. It's not the most annoying thing in the world. It's just like, I look down at my bar, oh, strange colours for no real reason. Also, the um, random bit of XP, The I don't know if you can see it very well, but the um, little reticule in the centre of the screen has also got that sort of purplish hue over it when over certain things. Like if I'm over, uh, yeah, that X is now purple for some reason. That's because of having like these enchanted items here or something. Anyway, I'm gonna pop to bed because it's night time and night time is bad. Take some food first. So in this episode I'm going to construct the other two bridges, in theory construct the other two bridges which connect to where the moon palace is going to be. It's going to be a bit haphazard because I've not really prepared the area so it's going to be a kind of interesting, I'm just going to grab a bunch of stone. I have a chest over there already but it's only one chest so I'll grab another chest just to make sure I have enough stuff so yeah let's head over I'm gonna go down here grab my well railway click the button Whee! I've also have a couple of things to look at well I have one thing to look at the in the creative world but it's on the topic of lamps road lamps street lamps which is something that often comes up because it's quite difficult to come up with elegant solutions to lighting in Minecraft especially like overhanging lighting up the stairs I'm gonna dump this stuff in the box, I'm glad I bought an extra chest so we'll sort that out in a minute in the meantime I have completed the road, which is now covered in snow, which is kind of annoying. It weaves its ray around the mountains to the town circle, where it comes in at a bit of an odd angle, but uh, it was easier to come through here because that was like the natural low point between these two hills. And even then, I had to cut through a bit of terrain, which I'm not massively pleased with. Um, and it, yeah, it comes out in a bit of an odd place, but that is partly, oh hey, another chest, take that stuff. It's partly a solution to a problem, which I wouldn't say doesn't exist, but yeah. But uh, yeah, so I kind of decided on that front that I didn't really need to have everything perfect like a little bit of a little oddness, a little strangeness, a little things that are a bit off kilter kind of works because you don't want your town to be like perfect set out in a perfect grid where buildings can only be so sized and it would just look a bit odd so I have a bit of space here to put a building here or some trees or some detail and it looks a bit more organic than if it was coming in like exactly here which would have been a pain to do anyway this road weaves around enough as it is. 
Nom 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 nom. There we go. So we have our road. One thing that's missing currently is any form of street lighting. Which we'll go and look at very shortly. We've also got lots of snow landing on the ground. Which hopefully the lighting is gonna help solve. Anything that produces light in this game also produces a certain amount of quote unquote heat and will melt snow and generally make life in a snow biome slightly more livable. Uh, I could also add a big awning over here. I probably won't do that just because I'm already going to have enough vertical stuff with the street lamps depending on which model I go with. And that was gravel. Yeah, depending on which model I go with, I'm going to have lots of things above you. And basically, I don't want to over complicate the. I don't know how I can get rid of the snow because it's going to be snowing again at some point. So, yeah. There's no point getting rid of that snow, even though I just did. So yeah, street lamps. They will in theory melt snow if I have them in a certain setup. Which, we'll see. So, these bridges. I'm going to put a bridge here that will span from that's around about here to exactly the opposite over. And also on the other side, at exactly the same height, I'm going to have to fill in a lot of this land to get to the right level. And it's going to go to there. And it's going to have a similar design as this bridge here. But I may add some more ostentatious elements. So I may even go grab some quartz. And just to, to highlight some bits. But it's really designed to be very similar to this bridge. And yeah, above it. So before we do that, I would like to go have a look at the streetlight designs. Basically because I think they're interesting. And it's a topic that comes up every now and again in Minecraft, especially with you're building big cities and things, because they're very clunky. Anyway, let's head over to head. Ah, let me start that sentence again. <laughs> let's head over to my creative world and see what I've come up with. So see you there. And here we are over in the creative world with many things which we've seen before. Uh, as a side note, I'm going to at some point soon construct a farm building which is more like this. I'm going to get this to work. I'm going to use the water tiering system that's on this one or like this. But uh, in, well, somehow build it into this method because I like this kind of a flat uh, almost it's more westernized. It's more it's almost um, I say I said westernized, but it's almost Japanese like with the sort of pagoda type thing. But it's a lot more in keeping with the theme I feel than the the pagoda, not pagoda, um, cigarette, which just did not work at all. So I might not do that on camera. I might do a montage. We'll see. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about street lights and their abundance of an irritation. Okay, so. I have several designs here of various kinds using various different materials. Uh, I say that actually, they're all using kind of the same set of materials, which is smooth stone bricks in some form, uh, smooth stone slabs. Uh, uh, what are these called? Oh, uh, yeah, trapdoors for extra detailing, and things like fences and, and whatnot. So, we're going to start off with the most basic versions which are a piece of either glowstone or a redstone lamp on top of a short pillar. Now these are cheap and easy to do, they're not very detailed. You can add variations, like you can add uh, switch around these block types. Uh, for example you can do that, which doesn't look as good in my opinion. You can't add a uh, thingy on the top. You can even do things like put cages around them just to make them look a bit more impressive which I don't think works but I've seen people do before 
There's also a variation on things like this where you put a piece of netherrack down and you put like trapdoors around it to cover up the netherrack and it's like a burning brazier type thing. So those are some very simple designs. I'm not keen on any of these. I think that one's probably the nicest because you have the contrasting colours, the smooth andesite, andestone, andesite, andesite, the smooth andesite because it's a very simple texture, very similar to the smooth stone slabs. They kind of play off each other because compared to like a smooth stone brick, uh, a smooth stone brick base, or even a cobble base, or even like a chisel stone base. Oh, that's a monster egg version. <laughs> so if I, if I broke that with a pick, it would get a, uh, it would spawn a silverfish, which I don't want. So I'm not going to break it with a pick. Anyway, yes, using andesite. It kind of matches the ten texture, style, and complexity, and then you're just basically seeing the contrast, which, because of the way, basically because at night especially, because this edge of the uh, glowstone lamp texture is really dark, from a distance it almost looks like there's a slight recess, like a one pixel recess for this light, which I kind of like. Uh, that's led to because of on the stone slab and the polished andesite you have a kind of beveling edge in the texture. So when you look at it, your eye kind of assumes there's a beveled edge there and a beveled edge there, so it assumes that this section here is further back, slightly recessed. Now, you don't really see it until you're all the way back here, but uh, I think it's quite nice. And I mean, you do get that with these two. This has the same effect, but I think the contrast and the simplicity of these two textures really leads to kind of really get your eye in. But in any case, I don't actually like <laughs> I don't actually like any of these versions. You can do funky things with uh, yeah, with light sensors. For example, come here. Oh, I hate creative mode sometimes. Uh, you can do funky things with light sensors. I mean, that will annoyingly turn off the lamp during the day, during the night time, and turn on the lamp during the day. But uh, if you invert it and do funky things, which I've done with another lamp, which I'll show you in a second. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Hands, please type correctly. There we go. Yeah, you can do funk funky things. Uh, and I'll show you, a, yeah, in one of the other versions. They're very similar. Um, I built these in a weird order. I built them, like, down that side, and then down this side, and then at the ends. So, I guess... No, let's talk about this one. This one is a slightly kind of raised version. Which I really hate. I really hate this. I think it looks terrible. It's a grouping of, st of stone slab stairs. I mean, it's kind of like that. Uh, it's a pain to build because of the way stairs work. You kind of have to do that. Then you stick in a piece of glowstone. You can't use a glowstone lamp. Or you can use a glowstone lamp if you don't mind it being pointlessly inverted and turning on in the day and turning off during the night, which is the exact opposite of what you want it to do. That's basically because you have no space to put redstone to invert the signal coming from the light sensor. Because um, currently light sensors, what they do is if it's during the daytime, if they're receiving light, they will turn on, and they will emit a redstone signal. And during the night time, when there's no light hitting them, they don't emit a red light, a redstone signal. So if you can invert that signal, then you get the opposite behaviour. So it'll turn on during the night and turn off during the day. So yeah, this is this is an attempt to make something a slightly more raised, but uh, still have the kind of volume of these. I mean, you could do something where you do that and get rid of these back bits, but then that looks a bit weird where it's all raised up. Um, so yeah, I don't like this design. I, I won't be using it myself. That doesn't mean that uh, if you like this design, then you know, or bad or something. I just personally, it doesn't do. Doesn't personally, it doesn't do anything for me. Uh, 
time set night just so we can have a bit more time to look at these in the in the darkness so the next one here is this is incredibly common solution to the lighting situation this is a set of fences and two lumps of glowstone and some uh, trapdoors now this works and this looks quite good because fences don't connect to transparent blocks and glowstone gets as a transparent block so you don't get this kind of connecting effect that you get from having two fence posts next to each other or a fence post and a full block like if I put one here it'll connect whereas if I put one here, oh it also connects um, well it doesn't with glowstone so if I take that one out and put one back in yeah now this is this is not a bad solution this looks pretty good I mean I don't particularly like the glowstone texture in of itself I know a lot of people choose to change it to something that looks a lot more like the redstone lamp especially when redstone lamps didn't exist so it looks like a, a glass covered you know uh, lamp of some description now I choose not to do that because then when you go into the nether everywhere has like strange lamps in the wall that shouldn't be there and it kind of breaks my suspension of disbelief so I kind of do choose not to do that with this design uh, I, I kind of see this design as a, as a low cost like not low cost per se but uh, you wouldn't see this in like the really high class parts of the city because it's a bit uh, it's a bit simple it's not very ostentatious um, it's a little crude I think is the best word for it so I might use this design elsewhere but not in the not in the main city okay next one uh, there are two variations on this which is a very wide platform either raised or not raised with a lamp underneath or a source of redstone underneath so you can do the daylight sensor trick if you really want um, I think this one is slightly nicer uh, there is a variation of it where you have these open uh, they're mostly there just to give a bit more detail like if I take them out it looks a little plain and it doesn't seem to look it doesn't seem to work to me but I, I think it works better with these in with these trapdoors in and then you can choose to have them open or closed one thing I have noticed is that uh, trapdoors are supposed to have a redstone enabled trick so if I get a redstone lamp this may not work because yeah if they receive a redstone signal they open like a door or something like that and they don't receive redstone signal through redstone blocks it would seem so redstone enabled blocks like a redstone lamp so these won't move when the status of this lamp changes in theory I haven't noticed it doing it so apparently it does huh that's strange it's not done that before to me well there you go that could be a problem if you did enable it with a light sensor but uh, I'm not going to use this design myself because I think it takes up too much space it's not a bad thing to have like in the center of a small square just to give light to the sort of surrounding area but it's not a street lamp design it, it's it's like a it's like a town center like design like a village center satellite design so I'm not going to be going with that the next one here is a variation on this one down here which I'll show you first I'm actually going to grab my light sensor again because this one I have rigged up to work with a light sensor if I can remember exactly where yeah there we go so if I stick a light sensor here, that's a block of glowstone. Light sensor there. Or is it here? Uh, forgive me while I fiddle with redstone. I had this working, and now it's not, and now that kind of annoys me. Time set. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so during the day it's off. Time set night. It turns on during the night because of this light sensor, which 
is annoying because it has to be embedded in the ground slightly. Uh, I'm trying to work out a way to do it while it's on the surface. Sorry, pardon me. Um, I'm trying to work out a way of doing it on the surface without having to have the block here missing so that the redstone can get through or having to have a block there to hide the redstone. But more on that another time. So yeah, that's the that's the redstone trick. If you invert it, if you invert the signal going to it, um, so this is this is not sending out to any signal, which means that this lamp is to, it will turn on. If it receives signal, it'll light up this. It'll power this block here, which will unpower that torch, which means this will go off. Redstone can be quite complicated. Um, I'm not a great teacher of redstone because I don't fully understand it. There are lots of other people out there who do redstone videos. Uh, there's a gentleman known as Seth Bling who does some really, really good redstone tutorials and he also does lots of things with command blocks. So if you want that kind of stuff, I would heartily advise checking him out. And yeah. So yeah, street de designs. This I actually quite like. It's very simple. It is just two stone, a stone slab and two stone brick stairs. It's quite low level light. Um, so it's not kind of going to give you massive massive amounts of illumination, but if you have one on each side or the or alternating down the road, it kind of gives a little a little bit of detail, a little bit of verticality, but isn't as harsh as it either of these or takes up as much room as those two down there. Okay, we have again a variation on this one, which is a single piece of glowstone on a stick. Again, a very common style of light. Uh, but the same thing applies, which is basically this isn't very ostentatious. It's not really showing off much flare. It's not showing off like much to do kind of it's 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 cheap basically and it looks kind of cheap and it will work in a cheap part of the city or in a village or something so I probably will use this design or that design somewhere uh, the benefit of using this is you can actually hide pretty much all of the redstone a uh, glowstone texture with trapdoors on this version you can't put a trapdoor here on this edge because of the uh, the fence post here and even if you could so if I take this fence post out and put a trapdoor there, close it. I can't put a trapdoor on the other side as well. So you, even if you could put a trapdoor in the same block as a fence, you couldn't have to. Although if they fixed it so you could have a fence post and a trapdoor in the same block, A, it wouldn't work because the trapdoor would hit the fence, and B, if they fixed that, they'd probably fix it so you can have two trapdoors, one contained within one block space, which they never will because it doesn't make any sense. Okay. Uh, more variations on that first one here. This is essentially raising up the central lamp a little bit, so it has a little bit more verticality. It will, it will cast light a little further from being further up. The downside to using this design is that you cannot use a redstone lamp anymore because you can't it can't receive power. Uh, if this was a full block here where this slab is, it could receive power. But uh, with that kind of little raised platform and then the light on top, it can't. So that's why that one's redstone. Uh, similarly, this version, again, it is raised up. However, I filled in that block down here and also added these uh, uh, stone brick stairs to the side. I think it just felt it felt like when it was like this, it didn't it didn't really didn't really work for me. But when I rounded off the sides. Like so, it did work for me. And as I said, because you have a full block and you have a full block here, even though it's two slabs, it counts as a full block and not a transparent block, uh, that can now receive power and transmit power to the top there. So your redstone lamp, your uh, daylight sensor, and redstone lamps will work. Okay, so the last design I have here is again another glowstone only method. And that is a hanging street lamp. Now, I don't know what I think about this. I kind of like the concept and I kind of like the idea and it's very in keeping with like the the arch the arch design where it's 
nice tight curve. It also works for the bridges and the, the long bridge and the short bridge over the gap between uh, the moon palace and the stairs. But it's kind of a bit ham-fisted. That curve isn't really a curve. Uh, I'd ne you'd need a much bigger sort of circle to get a better curve. You also don't don't land on top of the. There we go. You don't notice how how shallow or how kind of sudden this change from up to a curve is on things like uh, the archway because you're quite far away from where the curve is. You are very many y axis. <laughs> you're much further below it, so you don't see it as close up, and you don't see that change as clearly. I don't think I'm going to use this design in the end. I think it's very, still very rough. Also, you can't redstone lamp it because there's no full blocks around it to, to, to give it power. It would be really nice if they had like a redstone enabled or a redstone infused like fence or iron uh, iron bars so you can easily transport redstone up and down. I'm not sure if that's a uh, let's make it let's make it stop raining. I don't know if that's a design uh, decision or if it's a a restriction they want to keep in or if it's a technical problem but uh, having better redstone transmission vertically is kind of like the next step for redstone. I think it's what's missing and I think it would make a lot of people's lives easier because I mean with redstone you can do some funky things like uh, if you have a powered block underneath you can basically transmit to see I don't know if this is going to work you basically can transmit signals around using redstone towers like this yeah I'm not a redstone expert so you'd have to find someone who actually knows what they're doing to talk about this there we go. Yeah, you can you can have a redstone signal that you can toggle on and off using this method where you have a redstone attached to a block so you can uh, modify the status of that block. Uh, so this, this torch will then power this block which will then change the status of this block or this torch which will then change the status of this and then you just keep you can keep uh, you can keep going basically as pretty much as high as you want and it will just invert the signal each time and this is a good method of transmitting signal and, sta and signal status up as long as you're not reliant on time I think so if I get a piston and stick the piston at the top there so that piston will come in and out when we toggle this. And if I hit this, you hear how long it takes for the signal to reach there? It's anything it's it's really slow. And if you're doing something like I don't know, opening a trapdoor or pulling or opening a piston door, it's not too bad. And you can deal with that, but if you're doing something that requires precision, like some form of clock or anything like that, you are going to run into timing problems because your transmission isn't instant like it would be for a just a line of redstone. So if I put a line of redstone here, put a piston. Ah, put a piston. So this switch is instant, pretty much. So yeah. Impromptu redstone lesson. Um and I actually talked longer about these lamps than I thought I would. So I will end the episode here. As you can see, this torch is turned off. This uh, this lamp is turned off now that it's daytime, automatically. So yay! <laughs> Thank you, Sun, for giving us something that works. So, yes, 
thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed and next time we will build those bridges and I will probably choose one of these designs to use it's likely going to be this one mostly because it's a quite a low profile quite a simple design which I like and you can also run over it which uh, for some reason amuses me but yes thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed goodbye